every mountain and every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. And I'm going to get another scripture in Isaiah to back that up. For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face, nor is there iniquity hidden from my eyes. So through the spirit, you know, uh, the scripture that I'm going to get to back this up uh, gives me the incline that it's talking about us becoming those hunters. And first I will repay double for their iniquity and their sin. Now, this is talking about the so-called white man, the so-called Chinese, the so-called Arabs, the so-called Hamites, or the so-called Africans, the Hamites. And first, I will repay double for their iniquity and their sin, because they have defiled my land. This is talking about the nation of Israel. This is talking about us. They have filled my inheritance, as I read in Deuteronomy chapter 30, 32 and verse 5 through 7. Because they have filled my inheritance, being the nation of Israel, with the carcasses, the dead bodies, of their detestable and abominable idols, being all of their different false religions, whether it be Cesare Borgia, whether it be the engraved images, whether it be Buddha, whether it be Molech, whether it be Muhammad, all of these false religions are all idols. Now I'm going to get Isaiah. There we go, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 12. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Also the envy of Ephraim, being the northern kingdom, shall depart. So no longer are the so-called Negroes, Jamaicans, and Haitians looking at the so-called Mexicans, Guatemalians, Puerto Ricans, Panamanians, Colombians. We're not looking at them crazy. We're not looking at the native Indians crazy. We weren't looking at them crazy before. Because we know that when they had us in, we know that when the so-called white man had us in slavery in America, when one of us would escape and run down south, we would find the so-called Mexicans. We would find the so-called native Indians. We would find our brothers and they would take us in. And when the so-called white man would come to the so-called Mexicans or the so-called native Indians or the so-called Seminole Indians who are in who are in Florida, when they would come to us trying to get their slave back, the Mexicans would fight for us. They'd be like, no, nah, you're not taking our brother. Go away. You know, when they would fight, because you got to remember that the 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 native Indians who are who are mixed in among Ishakar, Gad is mixed in among Ishakar and uh, Guatemala or Zebulon, they're mixed in somewhat uh they fought the so-called white man for close to 300 years over 300 years i think the so-called aztecs the so-called indians the seminole indians they were fighting mainly mainly uh gad they were fighting the so-called white man for close to 300 years so when we would escape and run down to them they would the, the so-called white man was intimidated because they knew that gad was not messing around you know also the envy of ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim being the Latin tribes and the native Indians and the Seminole Indians, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, being the Negroes, Haitians, so-called so Negroes, so-called Haitians, and so-called Jamaicans. And Judah, being the, as I just said, shall not harass Ephraim, being the Latin tribes. But they shall fly down. Okay, notice it said they shall fly down. Whoa, let's go to Revelations. Y'all bear with me. Hey, hey, through the spirit, man. This is like, hey, this is like, a, uh. Hey, this book constantly renews itself.
Y'all bear with me. Now when it said, uh, they shall fly down. Now this is talking about Ju this is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. The, the southern kingdom being Judah, the so-called Negroes, the so-called Haitians, and the so-called Jamaicans. As well as the northern kingdom being Ephraim. The so-called Puerto Ricans, the so-called Mexicans, the so-called Guatemala, Guatemala, Guatemalians, Panamanians, Colombians, Uruguayans, Argentinians, Chileans, uh, Cubans, Dominicans, so-called Native Indians, and so-called Seminole Indians. So we're going to be flying down. This is Revelations chapter 3 and verse 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth, the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have that no one take you, may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar. What are pillars used for? They're used to hold up a temple. They're used to hold up a house. Him who he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my power, and he shall go out no more. So our Lord isn't going to cast away his people anymore. I will write on him the name of my power being Yahweh. So we're going to be sons of Yahweh. And the name of the city of my power being Yasharala in Yerushalem, the new Jerusalem which comes down from heaven, from my power. I repeat, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven, from my power, and I will write on him my new name. Now who has an ear? Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Back to Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 14. But they shall fly down upon the shoulders of the Philistines, which is the grandson of the nation of Egypt. So the Egyptians had us in bondage and captivity. The Philistines didn't, well, the Philistines had a, had a part in it as well, as well as the Sidonians, the Canaanites. They were dwelling right next to Israel. They were dwelling right next to us. So when Nebuchadnezzar invaded on Judah, they didn't do nothing about it. They separated themselves and they ran. But they shall fly down upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. Who's in the east? Those Arabs, those uh, those 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 those, uh, those Russians, those 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 Chinese, those Japanese, uh, those East Indians, Elam. They shall lay their hand on Edom, the so-called white man. And Moab, the so-called Chinese, and the people of Ammon, the so-called Japanese, shall obey them. The Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt with his mighty wind. So we're, we're in modern day Egypt. And he will shake his fist over the river and strike it in the seven streams, which is a complete number. So all of these different avenues of income, whether it be their RFID microchip, whether it be Bitcoin, whether it be Dogecoin, whether it be their, uh, whether it be their, uh, cryptocurrency, whether it be their trade routes that their cargo ships go on, which our Lord has cut off on the West Coast. There's hundreds of cargo ships that are sitting on the West Coast and they're not able to dock. Whether it be our Lord cutting off the sower and the reaper from Babylon, which goes into Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 16, cut off the sower from Babylon and him who handles the sickle at harvest time. That's what our Lord did with all those ships that are on the West Coast. He cut off him who handles the sickle at harvest time for fear of the oppressing sword, which is the Lord's judgment. Everyone shall turn to his own people. So our Lord is making that separation as he tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 50. Shalakia, Matthew chapter 12, Shalakia, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. 
Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Okay, and then I'm going to get. Luke chapter 12 and verse 49. I came to send fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Now, this is our Lord baptizing his body, being the whole nate, being one third, being the remnant of Israel, being those faithful believers. Bringing uh, that 12,000 out of each tribe, all 12 tribes of Israel into the full understanding of the gospel and also uh, awakening that large multitude. Do you not, Shalakia, do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you not, not at all, but rather division. Cut off the sower from Babylon and him who handles the sickle at, at harvest time for fear of the oppressing sword. Everyone shall turn to his own people and everyone shall flee to his own land. Okay, so we know I'm going to get a few more scriptures. I'm not going to hold y'all too long. We know that our Lord is coming back for that remnant, which goes into Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 20. But I'm going to also get it in 2nd Esedras. Back to Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 15. The Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt. With his mighty wind, he will shake his fist over the river and strike it in all seven streams. So our Lord is completely shutting down the sower and the reaper from Egypt, from Babylon, being America. This is where they held a slavery. Our Lord is getting ready to shut it down, which is why you see half of America unemployed and they're not receiving unemployment, which is why you see America in $30 trillion in debt. And make men cross over dry shod. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people who will be left from Assyria as it was for Israel. As I said before, so after, after Assyria and Babylon invaded on the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, some of, some, of Jerus some of the Israelites came back to Jerusalem. Well, in today's day and time, our Lord is bringing back a remnant of his people to Jerusalem. To the remembrance of who we are. But we know that this is not our land. This is not our land. Shalakia, this is not our rest. This is not our le This is not our rest. So we're not getting comfortable in this land. Our Lord is bringing us back to Jerusalem. By way of remembrance of who we are. And in turn he's going to call us up into the chariots. Into new Jerusalem. Who will be left from Assyria. As it was for Israel. In the day that he came up from the land of Egypt. Now I'm ended on, on a couple more scriptures. This is Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated them, being the so-called white man, the so-called Arabs, the so-called Chinese, but will depend on the Lord Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty power. For though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, a remnant of them will return. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Okay, now I'm going to get Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two thirds in it shall be cut off and die. This is talking about the whole of the nation of Israel. But one third will be left in it. Now, this is one third of the nation of Israel. We're going to continue to persevere and be diligent. And we're going to be patient until the Heavenly Father sends his only begotten son back. I will bring the one third through the fire. We'll refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, Yahweh, Bahasham, in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the son. 
Bahasham in the name of Rakakwadash, being the Holy Spirit. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, This is my people, and each one will say, The Lord Yahweh is my power. What did our Lord tell us in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12? I will write on them the name of my power and the name of my city, being New Jerusalem. So our Lord said, This one third I will bring them through the fire. This is Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 9. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger. And for my praise, I will restrain it from you so that I do not cut you off. So our Lord is ready to destroy this place now. But he's waiting for that same way our Lord told us in James chapter 5 and verse 7. See how the patient farmer waits for the for the uh, perfect fruit of the crop. Our Lord is waiting for all of all of the elect to be sealed. He's waiting for the one third being those faithful believers to come into the full understanding of who we are. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. And this is why we say. Y'all yeah, bear with me. This is why it's important that you continue to be diligent. Now, when when you when you uh when you come into the understanding of certain things, this is Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 30. Blows that hurt, cleanse away evil. So if it feels like somebody's getting on you, you know, if it feels like you gotta change something. And it, and it hits you like, man, I've been doing this the whole time and I didn't even know. Blows that hurt, cleanse away evil, as do stripes the inner depths of the heart. So part of uh, refining silver, you put it through heat. So as our Lord is refining us, we find out certain things that we've been doing that are not okay in the eyes of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. There are also certain things that may take time for people to change, you know, as far as uh, uh, whether it be uh, whatever situation you may be in. But our Lord is deferring his anger in that we may, you know, correct ourselves in that he may correct us. This is Romans chapter two. And I'll start at verse one. Therefore, you are inexcusably um. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are, who judge for whatever you judge another, you are condemned yourself. This goes into mercy. For you who judge practice the same. So you don't want to be a hypocrite. You know, you want to have an understanding heart. It's going to take time for somebody to fully understand the things that our Lord has set forth from us. But even if somebody who may not have understood before, if they come back, and they say, hey, I understand what you're saying now. You know, that's one that, that, hey, the spirit of the Lord is maybe sitting on that man. You know, the, the heavenly father and his only begotten son may have opened up his eyes and unplugged his ears. And he may have, uh, have changed a couple situations and repented from certain things so that he could, you know, come into the full understanding. But we know that the judgment of the most high is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of the Most High? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance and long suffering? So the Lord is being patient with his men and with his uh, his daughters and with the children, those who are meant to receive this knowledge, not knowing that the goodness of Yahweh leads you to repentance. So when you repent from your sins, you turn away from your sins. You say, hey, I'm done eating pork. I'm done eating shrimp. I'm done eating crab. I'm done smoking. I'm done, I'm done sleeping with other men's women. I'm done 
uh, 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 worshiping idols. I don't want to. I'm done worshiping Sejore Borgia. I'm done worshiping Buddha. I'm done worshiping uh, the Virgin Mary. I'm done worshiping Muhammad. You say bye to all those things. I'm done worshiping Allah. Whoever, whoever the Muslims worship, you say bye to all those things because you've come into the truth. You repent from your sins and you come to the truth and you humble yourself and you ask the Lord for forgiveness. And that goes into Hosea chapter five and verse 15. Hosea chapter five and verse 15. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their repentance. Then they will seek me earnestly in their affliction. They will seek me earnestly. What is that affliction? Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. Back in Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you. At the sound of your cry, when he hears it, he will answer it. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, realizing, dang, I've been doing things that offend the Heavenly Father this whole time. Okay, well, let me straighten myself up and, and, and pray to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, that he gives me wisdom so that I know how to judge myself and not go off anymore. Yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers, which are the men of GMS, the men of Great Millstone. Or any, any camp that comes in, any camp that uh, reverences, that gives on, uh, double honors to those men. Because we know that there's other camps out there, but their doctrines are off. Back to Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face in their affliction. They will earnestly seek me. Back to Romans chapter 2 and verse 5. But in accordance with your hardness and your intemperate heart, your, inter your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yahweh, who will render to each one according to his deeds, eternal life to those who by patience, continuance in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Okay, and then verse thirteen, for the hearers of the law are just for the shalakia, for not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of Yahweh, but the doers of the law will be justified. And then I wanted to get one more scripture. And I say, hopefully let. So when I talk about uh, the men from the from from G, from Great Millstone, uh, you know, we we all we constantly come in the spirit of being hopeful. We hope that we're those men, you know, because ultimately we don't know, but we know that our Lord is separating the the the, the good from the bad. You know, those who are sincere in heart from those who are self self willed, self seeking, and and they're you know they're they're wolves in sheep's clothing. So I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, our Lord tells us in Ecclesiasticus chapter four 
and verse 22, accept no person against your soul and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So I don't want anybody to get into, you know, worshiping the man, worshiping the creation. You know, we're, we're ultimately to worship and give infinite honor, glory and praise to the heavenly father and his only begotten son, Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. It reads, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the re re revealing of the sons of Yahweh. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. Now, this is talking about existence. Even the trees are going to be rejoicing when the Heavenly Father sends His only begotten Son back. Even the birds. Why you think so many birds and so many squirrels, so many beasts, so many fish have been dying? Because our Lord is calling those spirits back up to the spiritual realm. Same with the people. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now not only that but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our body for we were saved in this hope but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees but if we hope for what we do not see we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Okay. So I mentioned the law, statutes, and commandments. And ultimately, the Heavenly Father sent our Lord Yahawashai, His only begotten Son, to die for our sins because uh, the law wasn't able to make us perfect. So, same way our Lord sent Yahawashai back several times to fulfill His lot, well, He set the law, statutes, and commandments as a guideline to how we may live until He can put the law, statutes, and commandments within us. Being that Holy Spirit. And when he does that. This is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. Now what is grace? Grace is uh, showing favor. As I read in Romans chapter 2 and verse 13. For the hearers of the Lord will not be justified but the doers. Those who try their best to follow the law, statutes and commandments. Back to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord Yahweh listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord Yahweh and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you again, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves the most high and one who one who does not serve him. And the rest of Shalakia in chapter four. Of the book of Malachi is a beautiful I'll give the book of Malachi chapter 4 and verse 4 I really want to get the whole book Shalaki the whole chapter I'll get the whole chapter This is Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1 For behold the day is coming Burning like an oven And all the proud Yes all who do wickedly Will be stubble And the day which is coming Shall burn them up Says the Lord of hosts that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, 
Yahawashai shall arise with healing in his wings, being those chariots, the angels, the so-called UFOs. And you shall go out after he, after New Jerusalem comes out of the clouds, after New Jerusalem comes down from the sky. And you shall go out and grow fat like star-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, pulling the wicked out of the clefts of the rocks, out of their underground bunkers. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which is command, which I commanded him in Herob for all of Israel with the statutes and judgments. Okay. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children Meaning when Elijah was on the scene, our Lord shewed certain miracles with Elijah and he turned the hearts of the fathers into the sons. Meaning he humbled a great amount of people. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of children to their fathers, which is what he did with Elisha. Lest I come and strike the earth with the curse. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. So our Lord shews favor on those who are doers of the word as well as hearers, trying their best to follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Well, doers of the word. Those who try their best to follow the law, statutes, and commandments. For grace you have been saved through faith because we believe in the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And we show that we love Him by following the law, statutes, and commandments. Part of that word believe is being an action word. If you believe something, you're going to be in order according to what it is that you believe. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of Yahweh. So faith is a gift of the Heavenly Father. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Which is why I say, you know, we give double honors to the elder of, elders and apostles of Great Millstone. But, uh... You know, these, these works are not of ourselves. We're, th th this, this work that the Heavenly Father has called us to do, is not, our Lord has already predestined our walk of life. Our Lord already predestined us to do everything that it is that we're going to do in the future. Everything that it is that we did in the past and everything that it is that we're doing in the present. Our Lord already had pre has preset it. So this is not for us to glory in ourselves. This is not of our own will. Not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his.